today we are going to be speaking about exporting because what happened is I have some clients, they're very interested in finding out how can I get my business in other markets. So we decided to add a few persons, have a nice little chat about how we can reach new markets. Today we have Herwin Willis from the Jamaica Agriculture Commodities Regulatory regulatory authority, a lot of big words there, but everyone knows it as JACRA. We also have Shamelia Moses. She is from Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association. And we also have Chandeline Davis, and she is from Jamaica Customs Agency. So the reason why we invited them to have this discussion are just to give us some information on how we can reach new markets because that's what's trending now. Lots of persons are being approached by other friends and families saying, hey, your product is so awesome. Why are you not trying to export it here? So we're going to get some feedback from the actual regulatory bodies on how we can do that, or what are the challenges with doing so. Today, we will have Mr. Willis speak first, then Ms. Moses, then Ms. Davis, okay? So to introduce Mr. Willis, we're going to start with him. He has a diploma in mechanical engineering. He also has an executive MBA from UA, from UE, sorry, Mona, and a bachelor's of science degree in management studies with honors, of course. Also, he was a certified coffee Q grader, held many positions at the coffee industry from 1983 to 2022, starting from the processing supervisor to quality assurance manager at the coffee industry board. Now he is the senior director of the coffee division of JACRA. Mr. Willis. All right, um, good morning everyone. And thanks for the opportunity um, to be here. So I am here to talk about um, entrepreneurial opportunities in JACRA regulated crops. No um, regulated crops are, well, JACRA is really a regulatory authority and we regulate the crops, coffee, cocoa, and the spices. All right. So this is what JACRA is. Um, right. the Jamaica Agricultural Commodities Regulatory Authority. It was established the statutory body was under um, JACRA Act in 2017. Our commence operation in January 2018. But as I said before, we actually monitor, we actually regulate coffee, cocoa, coconut, and spices. And this body, regulatory body, you know, the three predecessors in so bodies are the coffee industry board, the cocoa industry board, and the coconut industry, as well as the export division, like like right? And um, the roles that we play promote interest, growth, and efficiency in the regulated regulated commodities, and technical advice to the other stakeholders. We look at standards, grading, and export and import of commodities. Specify varieties of the commodities which may be cultivated or manufactured for export or local trade. And we also do some certification in the case of coffee. And coffee predates um, the regulatory aspect um, of coffee predates jackal and um, we do 
control that Iran created that as a result, we, we know um, our certification is taken very seriously overseas. And as a result, coffee quite a bit. If the, if the um, Jaffa is not as not certified, Christians will be asked. No, um, I don't want to bore you with all of this detail, but um, the, the coffee that, that would be marketed from the green bean, green beans is just before it has been mixed. And we also um, coffee in the finished form, roasted coffee, instant coffee, coffee products are all exported and also um, marketed locally. And um, as I speak, I don't think we, we really don't have enough coffee to satisfy the demand. To I can say that uh, in Japan, Japan is our largest importer of um, Jamaican coffee. But there are other, other um, jurisdictions that are trying to get coffee, Jamaican coffee, especially with Blue Mountain, which is a flagship coffee of Jamaica. Now, China has come on here, and every so often, they're asking if there is coffee, no coffee that we can get by and so on. But simply, we don't have it. Lately, we've had um, queries about turmeric. Now, turmeric is, most persons would have heard about turmeric, and it's, and it's um, health proper or health benefits. Turmeric, Jamaican turmeric. Very sought after because it is claimed that the active component in uh, tumor is a curcumin level is so high that um, all over persons are clamoring to get some of this. Currently, we produce not enough to sell everybody who wants it. So there is opportunity for persons to get involved or to work with persons who are actually producing tumor to expand it so that enough uh, more tumor can be available. As is the case with coffee, if there's more persons who come in, then you know, there will be ample amount, a greater amount to be able to sell in various countries. Our cocoa is also noted as one of the final, the eighth final approval Focus in the world. And as a result, it is very well sought after. Unfortunately, in um, earlier, earlier um, in, the, in 2017, there was a massive outbreak of um, first part of rot, damaged cocoa, cocoa parts, and damaged the, uh, and damaged the beans. So as a result, and now we are really under that attack and we um possibly do that. Now we are rebounding, but with, with that sort of rebound, there's still nothing wrong. So there's a lot of a lot of um, opportunities though. Um you have various stages where persons can come into the market as a farmer. Um, what we realize is the farmer does not maximize his return. He just sells the, uh, the cherry coffee to a processor. If he goes up, up the value chain is in a position to do much better in terms of his, his earnings from the coffee. So more and more persons know and moving up the value chain, they are going through the whole process of reaping cherry coffee, processing it, roasting the coffee, and doing other things with the coffee so that they can add value. And in added value, they can now earn more from the, from the coffee. Cocoa is the same thing. There are a few persons in Jamaica now. 
and they would have the Pope is just rebound. And have become chocolatiers. And as a result, they are earning more for their cocoa, from the cocoa that they produce. So um, there's, in, in, in essence, there are many areas that persons can get into the business with, um, using these products that um, DACA regulates. And, then, and in so doing, they will be able to, as an, as a, um, as an entrepreneur, find markets. Is there markets for them? And they will be able to do that. Because and as, we, as I am um, this third weekend, as I'm at that tomorrow, we will first stop eating, growing, eating what we grow and grow what we eat. Something that has part and for some time now. And I know the Minister of Agriculture, those persons that are involved there have been, you know, championing the, the, the whole cause of um, exporting more. And if more of our product, we do more of our crop that we do, are able to do much more in getting it in other markets, markets that are demanding these products to do well for the industry. And I will just cite a station that coffee, cherry coffee coming from the farmer might get. They're getting about ten thousand dollars for a box of cherry coffee. That box of cherry coffee will yield about ten pounds of coffee beans. Green coffee beans themselves will sell for maybe about um, fifteen US a pound. So it would be a hundred and fifty. Sorry, a hundred and if you were to average every pound was able to be sold. That's not the case. Say seven pounds would be sold, or seven and a half pounds. So it would be seven and a half pounds, fifteen dollars US. And when you work that out, there will be some gains to be made. If you add value in that very pound of coffee, when you roast it, you'll lose about 20%. But what is this sold for in the marketplace? be in the region of maybe 40 US dollars a pound. So you see the sort of um, value added um, earnings that is taking place. So you know um, there is there's a lot of things to be considered. You move on to the other produce products. Um, cocoa is the same thing. Cemento is the same thing. Coconut is there is much to be gained. Right now, you know, we are importing coconut water. And most of us here in Jamaica really like coconut water. We really like the coconut water. But we're not producing enough. So there's there's room for planting, there's room for processing and for bottling or canning as the case may be to sell some coconut water, to sell coconut milk. I said, one day, some people might call it juice. And to even produce copper for export or coconut con confectionery. So there's a lot, uh, there's, a, there's a number of things or products that we that um, those persons who are, in, in, who are looking at opportunities to, to um, get or uh, to continue uh, or grow their entrepreneurial spirit. So we um, can get involved. So you, what they would need to do though is to contact Jackra. We have a website that you um, they can use, they can search, and if not, they can call and ask for various persons here, and um, they'll get that they'll get more information on what they need to do. If they, they, uh, they'll get insight about. Regulations, the, the procedures that guide uh, that guide the whole process, and then so and you know take it from there. So, in closing, I just want to say that uh, 
it's an opportunity, especially for persons who are young and you know have the social media um, contacts and links and all of that. Get it in that space that you know things are here that they can be involved in and they can use finance do whatever business that they are. I thank you all for listening. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask. All right, so we'll have the questions at the end, but thank you so much, Mr. Willis. And so when I win the lotto, because that's one of my plans, uh, things that I plan to do, you know, win the super lotto. So when I win the super lotto, I'm going to get a huge piece of land in Portland and just plant a whole ton of coconuts so that I can start exporting coconut water, right? And some coconut milk, <laughs> definitely. And I'll be coming to you, okay? <laughs> All right. All right, so next we'll have Shamelia Moses. She is an international trade and development specialist with 13 years of industry experience. She is the holder of a bachelor's of business administration in international trade from Miss West Midwestern State University in Texas. She has an LLM in international economic law and policy from the University of Barcelona, Spain. In addition to holding numerous industry-related certifications from regional and international organizations and institutions, she gained accreditation as an international trade specialist from EBSI Export Academy in Ireland and gained her certification as a ProNet Export Marketing Trainer from GIZ and Caribbean Export Development Agency. She has trained SMEs in the manufacturing sector throughout the Caribbean, including Jamaica, in the fundamentals of exporting, export marketing, and export financing, and has supported SMEs in becoming export ready and identifying and entering export markets. In addition to several short-term consultancies, consultancies, she has managed the implementation of several development programs and projects worked for various institutions, including the Ministry of Trade in Grenada, the University of the West Indies in Jamaica, Organization for Eastern Caribbean States Commission in St. Lucia, and she has served as lead trade negotiator for the government of Grenada at the World Trade Organization. To be honest, I could just go on and go on because Ms. Moses has done a lot, right? So we're just gonna have you come on, Ms. Moses. We, we already know you're an expert, okay? So you can go ahead and start sharing your screen. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank the UCC for inviting me to present on behalf of the JME and to provide a little demonstration on how we help entrepreneurs reach new markets. The Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association is a leading industry association in Jamaica. Um, we, we provide key business support services to the members and we are a leading voice for the manufacturers and exporters in Jamaica. Uh, currently, the association consists of over 500 members, ranging from very micro to very large, and their membership and class classification is based on the general annual revenue sales. 79% um, of our members make up the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Uh, this year, we celebrated 75 years of support to the industry, and we recently celebrated our National Manufacturers Month in October, where we were able to celebrate a positive growth in export, export sales earned by Jamaican businesses. So that's something to be proud of for Jamaica, especially coming out of the pandemic. You may or may not recognize some of these products um, on the screen. 
you can simply put a raise your hand if you recognize any of these products. This is a wide range of products and all of these products are produced by some of our members. We represent companies in the productive sector that operate in a, in a number of areas such as manufacturing, primary production, and the provision of services for the domestic and export markets. So you may, you may not be aware, but some of our members are logistics companies and um, distributors and agents. The sectors listed here are listed in order of order of the composition of our membership. So as you can see, our largest producers are manufacturers, largest members are manufacturers of food, beverages, and tobacco. So juices, sauces, all those goods fall into that category. Um, so as you can tell, we represent a wide cross-section of manufacturers and service providers in Jamaica. Now, how do we contribute to exports? Currently, 30% of our members are already involved in exporting and have their sights set on increasing their exports. Um, we are focused a great deal on helping our exporters to boost their exports and sales as a matter of, as a result, as well as helping our non-exporters who are interested in exporting to boost their capabilities. And at the, at the core of this is our 10-point export growth plan which lays out key indicators that we think are necessary to boost exports and the industry as a whole. So how then do we contribute to export, exports as well as help our ex, ex, uh, entrepreneurs enter the export market? Our services that we offer fall into three main categories, advocacy, support, partnerships and programs, and export services. The JMEA represents the interest of our members through local representation and, re and, and, and on the regional and international scale. Where there's legislation or export procedures, for instance, that will impact our members' ability to, or impede their ability to, to continue to function effectively and to continue to grow and expand their businesses and exports. We provide feedback on our, from our membership to the, to the governments or government agencies that govern these, these um, legislations and so on. On the regional scale, we represent in a number of different ways. We provide support, we, pro, we pro, provide membership on, we, we seek membership on key industry organizations such as the Caribbean Private Sector Organization, the Caribbean Manufacturers Association. On the regional level, we provide feedback on discussions that are being held at the CARICOM level, such as the Council for Trade and Economic Development, um, which is very important for not only businesses to function in Jamaica, but also for us to be able to participate, participate competitively and effectively within the region. Some trade negotiations, we also provide feedback as they directly impact our members. The purpose of trade agreements is to allow, provide certain special treatment for companies to be able to enter new markets, such as the EU, for instance, which we provide access, which we have been given access to the signing of the EU CARIFORM EPA. Currently, there's a negotiation between CARICOM and Colombia for which we play an active role in representing the interests of our, of our members and ensuring that the provisions that they agree on do not negatively impact our members. So that's just a few ways of how we provide, um, we, we advocate for our members. Partnerships and programs are forged and developed constantly and renewed to help our manufacturers and exporters to be able to function effectively and to be successful in their endeavors. Project Amazon is one example in which we provided, we collaborated with some experts in the field to provide training for 20 of our manufacturers, 20 of our small members to be able to sell their products at Amazon. This is important because it enables our companies to be able to access markets they would not have been able to do so without 
significant amounts of financing. And it, it's, a, it's a platform that allows them also to expect, increase their exports. Um, we have a partnership with JAMPRO to implement the program called Export Max. Export Max is targeting small and medium sized exporters or biz companies that are ready to export but have not read yet made the leap to enter the export market. So the objective is twofold to increase exports as well as to enable small businesses to enter the export market. JMEA partners with the through the big system, big brother mentorship program, which in which ex, successful exporters are partnered with interested exporters on a smaller scale within the same industry. This has proven to be very successful in, because it offers the new exporters an opportunity to, to, to find out what are some of the challenges and to overcome them or avoid them altogether. The Bureau of Standards is very important for businesses to be able to provide quality and safe products to the public. And we have a very a long standing relationship with the Bureau of Standards. And through this partnership, they, allow, they have offered our services to our members at a discounted rate. Through our partnership with Exim Bank, short term and medium term loan facilities are offered to our members to enable them to be able to export um, through e commerce platforms and to upgrade their systems in technical technological field. The export team of JMEA keeps our members up to date by providing technical information on export procedures as well as export opportunities. And two main avenues through which we do this is through market research and providing opportunities for increased exports through trade shows and trade missions. We specialize in market research. And our ultimate aim of this is to enable our members to identify market opportunities um, to, and to, to, to know more about the profiles of the countries that they're interested in exporting to and be able to sell their products abroad. These three products are three of the tools that we use to provide this information to our members. Members may call us to ask us about regulations for exporting certain products such as turmeric or sauces such as pepper, um, pimento sauce, and so on. And this information, we derive this information through these platforms. Trade shows and trade missions, we coordinate these all the time to enable our members to go into the markets to see firsthand what are the other competing products, how they, need, how they need to reorganize their business or restructure their products to be able to get into those markets and as well to identify or meet or establish relationships with distributors and agents who will help them to navigate the business environment and get their products into the export market, into the target market. Um, we also assist our members to get to participate in other trade shows, whether they're virtual or face to face. So this is another avenue through which we can help them get their products into the market and understand the market that they are interested in. Now to the fun part. Some most of you probably have heard of this event before, but Expo Jamaica is Jamaica's largest platform through which we enable our local producers to be able to display their products. Buyers are invited as well as investors are invited to our to our mission to our trade show in order to connect with our local producers and to provide an opportunity for them to export their products and enter new markets. Consumers also benefit from this by being able to sample our products and to, to gain an appreciation for products they've never heard of before. So it's a twofold objective that it allows local sales to increase and for export sales to increase as well. Um, we invite you, the public, to come to our trade show in, in April. It runs from April 27th to 30th. And we hope you will have a good time. Thank you for 
inviting me. Thank you, Ms. Moses. That was a great presentation. Um, usually when persons are, usually when I ask persons, um, so who would I have to talk to about exporting? You know, they don't really say Jamaica manufacturers exporters, though. No. They usually say Jam Pro, but at least persons got to, you know, see that y'all are so active, you know. It don't just say exporters in your name. You are actively involved in helping persons, in helping SMEs. You, you spoke about the Export Maps program. I know that you're there with Jam Pro as well as JBDC helping and it's an accelerator where you help persons that are interested in exporting their products. So that is an opportunity that a lot of SMEs don't know that is available to them, right? So thank you again. And we'll have questions at the end. Now we'll move on to Miss Chandelaine Davis, who is the Senior Director, International and Industry Liaison is a career custom official with 22 years professional experience in customs operations, inclusive of passenger processing, coordination and management of movement of export, import and transshipment cargo, trade facilitation, strategic planning, training, policy development, trade negotiations, stakeholder engagement, and the delivery of quality custom services. Ms. Davis actively contributes to the development and modernization of the Jamaica Customs Agency, as well as customs administrations within the Americas and the Caribbean. Ms. Davis currently serves as a liaison to the ministries, agencies, and Department of Government, the Royal Customs Organization, and other multilateral bodies, the CARICOM Secretariat, and other regional bodies, and the private sector on matters related to customs operations and trade, including rules of origin, trade agreements, customs border management, and compliance. In her current capacity, Ms. Davis also serves at Paris Forum's lead negotiator on the review of Protocol 1 concerning the definition of the concept of originating products and methods of administrative cooperation to the CARI Forum EU Economic Partnership Agreement and represents Jamaica nationally, regionally, and internationally. Ms. Davis holds a Master's of Science in International Relations as well as professional certification specific to customs administration, international trade, and trade policy development and analysis, policy development and leadership. Ms. Davis is an active, avid learner and is actively involved in people development and service excellence. Ms. Davis. Good morning, everyone. I am, as was introduced, Chandelaine Davis of the Jamaica Customs Agency, and it is my pleasure being with you this morning. And this morning, I will be looking at it, providing a general overview of export, the export process, as well as touching on market access, what it is, what it means for us. King will also be taking a brief look at Jamaica and the preferential trade arrangements to which we are party and which we benefit from. And we hope to provide with you some practical guidelines that will help you in navigating the process of um, exporting and um, accessing these markets on the preferential terms. So the export process, things to consider. I need to hide this in here. Okay, let me go back. The exporter, first of all, as an exporter, you'll be required to complete an online registration form, um, online registration by the Jamaica Electronic Trade Systems Portal, um, what we commonly call JETS, or for or what else is known as as on Asakuda world. All items leaving the island are subject to border controls as stipulated by the Customs Act and enforced by the JCA. There are no taxes levied on exports. And as a matter of fact, effective April 2021, um, stamped duties were removed from all exports. Um, intrusive examination of export cargo um, are conducted based on 
risk assessment. So um, your cargo is not inspected in all cases. However, all cargo is subject to non-intrusive examinations. That is um, commonly known as scanning. And application for permits or licenses are to be submitted via the JSWIFT platform where applicable. So while we have the JSWIFT platform, um, persons can still walk in to the um, border regulatory agent and agency and apply for their permits. So the application process, the registration process as an exporter, and we work in collaboration with JAMPRO. So this application process also accounts for the JAMPRO um, application process. And it is done, as was first said, it's an online registration, and it is via um, this URL on our JETS platform. Um, step two, you would have, um, First step was to apply for a new user account. Then the second step is to apply for exporter registration within ASICUDA using the Export JA module. You would then pay for the exporter registration application using our e-payment portal. JAMPRO processes the paid application. If approval is granted, then there is a creation of the detailed declaration um, within the ASICUDA system and you are given your registration number. Um, the export process via C, first of all, you would complete your booking with the shipping company and you'd complete your ESAD using the Customs Data Management System, Asakura World Platform. Um, as a part of completing this ESAD, and ESAD is your electronic single administrative document, um, you would also be required to scan and upload your commercial invoice, the requisite permits. If you have certificates of origin, um, you would scan and upload, but you're also required to present the original permit and certificate of origin at the port. Um, you would pay your customs administrative fee, and the customs administrative fee was also modified in 2021. So for... Um, Commercial exports that exceed, I'm sorry, that so, so the application fee um, exports below US $500 attracts no CAF or stamp duty, as I previously said, US um, 500 or above attracts $3,000, but for commercial exports, um, they would it would attract five hundred um, dollars Jamaican dollars in calf. So that modification was made. Once approved, um, the exporter is required to deliver cargo to the port with um, their customs declaration number and booking confirmation. When we're exporting via air, the process is sim similar with minor deviation. So yes, once again, you would complete your ESAD, um, upload your invoice, certificates of origin, and permits were applicable. However, there's also the airport, um, the airlines require a tally sheet and dispatch form. So that can also be uploaded as well as it can be submitted um, physically. Um, you would also be required to then pay the CAF um, in the submission process, the registration of the ESAD process. You would, in both instances, you would be required to contact the contraband enforcement team of the JCA at least 24 hours before delivering the goods to the airline or to the port. And their contact numbers are listed. And you can get this information um, afterwards from the organizers. You would then be, once approved, once the ESAD is approved, you would then present the cargo and the customs declaration number to the export officer for checking, signing, and numbering of the tally sheet. So despite the electronic process for customs, the, air, the requirement for the airline um, of a tally sheet requires us to sign and number same. The cargo is then delivered to the airline's warehouse, and it must be borne in mind that some airlines require that you make an appointment um, in advance of uh, attempting to complete your exportation. 
paper. Um, and finally, you present the signed tally sheet and dispatch form to the airline's representative to facilitate the entry of the goods into the warehouse. Accessing global markets. So what is market access? Market access refers to the ability of a country or company to sell their goods and services across international borders. Um, it is often negotiated between countries for their mutual benefit, and it helps to eliminate barriers to trade, such as tariffs and quotas that oftentimes affect our ability to access uh, markets in the countries, country of interest. Now, within the context of the WTO, um, the World Trade Organization, market access is defined um, as it refers to conditions, tariffs, and non-tariff measures agreed by members for the entry of specific goods into their markets. The most common market access measure used is um, a tariff, which is applied to imported goods. Other measures may include technical standards, anti-dumping duties, import quotas, import licenses, and sanitary and phytosanitary measures. And it's very important for us to bear this in mind because oftentimes we limit our understanding to the elimination of tariffs or the reduction of tariffs. And then when we get to the border, we understand that there are issues concerning market access pertaining to um, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, health standards, um, food safety standards, as well as import quotas. So it's very important for us to dot our I's and cross our T's when we are contemplating markets to access for our products. Preferential market access. Preferential market access largely depends on a country's participation in either an FTA or a PTA. An FTA is a free trade agreement. A PTA is a preferential trade arrangement. And further on, I will share with you the distinction. FTAs are a type of regional trade agreement that offers reciprocal trade between two or more participating countries engage in the import or export process. RTAs can be established by countries in the same geographical region. However, we have seen where they can comprise countries from other, from different regions. So if we think Kerry, Jamaica is a part of several um, free trade agreements and regional trade agreements. We have our um, revised Treaty of Shagaramas, which is wider than a trade agreement, um, but looks at um, the establishment of a customs union. But we're also in other regional trade agreements, such as the CARICOM um, DR agreement, CARICOM Cuba, just to name two. So just an overview for our understanding and appreciation. Um, there are over 271 free trade agreements currently in force worldwide. And so there is great market access potential for participating countries. Um, many times it is a feeling that because of the benefits that are to be derived from FTAs, we should sign as many as possible. But it's important for every country to assess its ability to, to navigate the free trade agreement successfully. It's not sufficient to sign, but we must be able to sign and benefit from it. Oftentimes, if we do not have the kind of local production to take advantage of the market access, bearing in mind that this agreement is reciprocal, we find ourselves um, importing more than we are exporting. Apart from the market access available under FTAs, certain countries can also benefit from market on, um, access under PTAs, preferential trade agreements. Um, countries that benefit from under both FTAs and PTAs have greater market access opportunities, especially for their, 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 their um, exports. And um, for example, uh, Jamaican exporters and ex importers and exporters stand to benefit from improved market access and a reduction of trade barriers when utilizing um, both arrangements to which Jamaica is party. And while FTAs tend to be reciprocal, PTAs are non-reciprocal. 
and I will delve into this um, a little bit more. So benefits and opportunities on the preferential trade. One, improve market access for goods. Two, increase competitiveness in contracting states. Three, increased and more diversified exports. Um, to, um, four, <laughs> reduce trade barriers in contracting states. And it allows us to foster strategic linkages and improve overall trade and economic growth. So to, when we look at improving market access, um, the benefits to de be re derived are that prevent preferential market access for specified exports of Jamaican uh, um, origin um, in several regions and international markets. So it gives us a wider scope with which to trade and it grants us duty-free and quota-free market access to most developed countries for originating products from Jamaica. Um, we, the increased competitive, with respect to increased competitiveness, we can experience or enjoy lower prices for Jamaican products entering a market on a duty-free basis and improved market presence for Jamaican products. And of course, it will therefore enhance our brand recognition for both new and long lasting products. We will experience, we will see greater access for eth ethnically diverse products and an increased opportunity in specialty, high end or niche products based on origin. For example, Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee, Jamaican rum, jerk sauces and condiments. And this is especially true for markets that like this kind of, um, um, it's based, uh, their market, and dynamics is based a lot on quality and they enjoy the smaller niche, um, niche brands and niche products. So for instance, Canada is one such market. All right, so um, we will see reduced trade barriers and um, so increased, um, we increased negotiation and representation on trade issues at the local, regional, international levels through prescribed um, mechanism, mechanisms in each um, agreement, whether it should reduce and reduce trade barriers. Um, preferential trade should foster greater opportunities for forming strategic alliances. Wow. Strategic alliances with, with regional and international partners and increase distribution channels for products through these linkages. And this should result in gains for Jamaica's economy, um, which would contribute to economic growth and development through increased revenue and foreign exchange. So free trade agreements. Um, in this section, we will be looking at what is a free trade agreement. Um, FTA, the FTAs to which Jamaica is party, reciprocity versus non-reciprocity, and five steps to using trade agreements. So a free, a free trade agreement is a reciprocal trade agreement between contracting parties where their tariffs and other technical barriers to trade are reduced or eliminated. As the reduction or elimination of tariffs and TBTs can be immediate or gradual. And we see that one good example of that is our CARIFORM UK and CARIFORM EU economic partnership agreements where they have an immediate um, elimination basket of tariffs basket and a phased basket as well. So not all trade is covered under FTAs. So each agreement will stipulate what percentage of trade, the goods that will be covered and the terms of those uh, of that trade. Only negotiated products agreed by the parties are eligible for preferential trade under any given FTA. And countries that are not party to the FTA are known as third countries and their imports are subject to what is called the most favored nation rates or MFN rates. That is the normal duty rate that is applicable. Each FTA has its own rules of origin that determine um, the country, the nationality of a particular good. 
And so Jamaica's current, Jamaica currently participates in HFTAs as members of CARIFORM. CARICOM and CARIFORUM. These are the um, CARIFORUM EU Economic Partnership uh, Agreement. And when you go into ASICUDA to prepare your customs declaration, you would select the regime, EPA, the revised treaty of Shagaramas, which we call the CARICOM Agreement um, colloquially, and that um, regime code would be CCM, the CARICOM UK. Um, economic Partnership Agreement, which the regime is labeled CUK in Asikuda, the CARICOM Colombia Agreement on Trade and Technical Cooperation, CCO, the CARICOM Dominic, uh, Dominican Republic Free Trade Agreement, CDO, the CARICOM Costa Rica Free Trade Agreement, CCR, CARICOM Cuba Trade and Economic Cooperation Agreement, CCU, and the CARICOM Venezuela. Trade and Investment Agreement, CVE. Reciprocity. Um, originating within the context of our FTAs, it, um, it's important for us to understand that um, while there is reciprocity, there also, there also exist exclusions. As I said previously, not all goods are traded preferentially on the agreements. These agreements, so there are exclusions. So as it pertains to reciprocity, originating goods imported into Jamaica under an FTA can benefit from tariff reduction or elimination on the negotiated goods. Negotiated goods. Originated goods exported from Jamaica under an FTA can benefit from tariff reduction or elimination on negotiated goods. And remember, reciprocity is not the same as symmetry. Exclusions. Goods excluded from an FTA are subject to MFN rates, irrespective of origin. So if we manufacture something here in, for instance, um, on the CARI Forum EU, in the EPA, in the Economic Partnership Agreement, Jamaica has an exclusions list. And so on that exclusions list, we have certain types of cheese. The aim is that although the cheese that is coming in from the European Union, um, from the members party to the EPA, um, are coming in and they're originating in the EU, because that, that cheese, that item is excluded for Jamaica, they can, it cannot come in free of duties and they would have to pay the applicable duties on that item. Uh, so um, this slide seeks to represent the agreements with which we have um, reciprocal terms versus non-reciprocal terms. So of the um, eight agreements that were previously identified, only the, carry for, the CARICOM Venezuela is, non, is a non-reciprocal um, arrangement. So it provides a non-reciprocal preferential market access to Venezuela for negotiated commodities of CARICOM origin. All the others are um, reciprocal arrangements. So there are five steps to using the trade agreements. The first step, determine the correct tariff classification for the goods based on the harmonized system. Consult the specific free trade agreement to ascertain if the products of that tariff heading are eligible for preferential access. Consult the specific FTA to determine the relevant rules of origin applicable to the traded goods. Ensure that a valid and original certificate of origin is submitted with the goods declaration and that the direct consignment rule is met, and this is for imports, and ensure that the complete, that complete records relating to the shipment are maintained. Customs must retain these documents for the period specified. Example, three years for the EPA. So the agreements um, typically specify how long you should retain these documents and within the national space for the purpose of audits and legislative um, possible um, judicial matters up to seven years. So it's important for you to retain your documents.
And just to um, advise that the consultation, we are fully aware that you may or may not have access. Within these slides, I've shared those um, um, point reference points, as well as you can contact the JCA, and we will provide the necessary guidance. Jumping quickly to preferential trade arrangements, um, what we'll be looking at, what are preferential trade arrangements? How does Jamaica benefit from PTAs? The benefits to Jamaica under the eligible PTAs and um, the, the, the identifying PTAs that we are parties to. So preferential trade arrangements in the context of the WTO are unilateral trade preference scheme, schemes used by some WTO members to give preferential market access to products imported from developing and least developed countries. So it's traditionally where you have, um, it's non-reciprocal in nature, and the, um, typically it's a developed country granting this benefit to developing and least developing members of the WCO um, in accessing their markets. And so um, these generally take the, they, 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 um, take the appearance of generalized systems of preferences, GSPs, and, um, and also waivers. In the Jamaican, so how do we benefit? So, Jamaican exporters can access the preferential um, treatment for their products when entering the markets of the country that grant these preference schemes. And in order to take advantage of the market access, exporters will have to prove that their exports are of Jamaican origin in accordance with the terms of these preference schemes. And we, will all, we can also gain greater market access for our products through duty-free treatment abroad. Now, um, under the PTAs, we have um, PTAs with um, the USA and Canada. Um, we have our CARB CAN, which is a waiver, and we have um, the CBI and Sibera um, with the US. Jamaican um, exporters are eligible for duty free access with limited exclusions. And you can get these details from the Trade Board Limited, who administers and certifies for GSPs and these waivers, as well as the CARICOM agreements. It is the Jamaican Customs Agency that certifies and is a competent authority for the economic partnership agreements. So Jamaica, as was previously said, is also a beneficiary to at least 10 GSPs, which grant duty-free access to Jamaican exports to the market of donor countries. Um, I had looked at, um, so I'd already mentioned the CBI and the CARB CAN and the GSPs. So our donor countries are Belarus, Japan, Kazakhstan, Norway, Switzerland, the Russian Federation, Australia, New Zealand, Turkey, and the United States. We were part, previously a part of a GSP with Canada, but we graduated in around 2013, I believe, was when we graduated. So all of these countries listed here, we can export to and get um, market reduced or duty-free market access based on the terms of those GSPs. And as I said before, you can obtain that kind of information um, from the Trade Board Limited. Uh, so a practical guide for market access, as I wind down, um, we'll look at preferential exports, imports, and conditions required for preferential market access. So preferential exports, first of all, Verify again the proper classification of the goods, consult the JCA or Trade Board Limited regarding the eligibility of your goods, um, obtain your certificate of, of origin from the competent authority in Jamaica. And as I said before, it's the JCA for the EPAs and Trade Board Limited for the other F FTAs and PTAs. A valid original certificate of origin is to be um, exported with the goods along with other supporting documents. So your certificate of origin should accompany your cargo. Um, 
The goods are to be directly consigned from Jamaica to the destination country to secure preferential access. And I've used this term twice, at least twice so far. And what it means to be directly consigned, almost all trade agreements has, has a provision on direct consignment. That is to say that cargo should leave the point of export to the point of import directly. If it is that for reasons of transport or trade and routing, uh, you would need to transship or transit another country, a third country outside of the agreement. It is important that these goods are under, kept under custom surveillance and no further activity is taken on the cargo uh, except for offload, unload, unload or for purposes of pres um, preservation. So it's important that it does not enter um, the customs territory or the domestic space, it should be kept under um, custom surveillance. Otherwise, you run the risk of not being granted preferential market access on importation. Imports, similarly, you verify your classification, you consult the competent authority, and um, you obtain your um, certificate of origin. Um, and a valid and um, certificate, valid original certificate of origin, along with other um, supporting documents, must be submitted when you're making your import declaration. And goods that are again to be directly consigned from the originating party to Jamaica, so as to secure your preferential access. Final, um, finally, um, some of the conditions um, that are required. All items must be imported under the various FTA, un, imported under the various FTAs, must fulfill the origin criteria to be eligible for preferential duty treatment. And if you notice, I'm repeating this and trying uh, and ensuring that it is re-emphasized. The origin criteria dictate that a valid certificate of origin submitted in original from the designated authorities of the exporting country is, is to be provided. In our experience, we have seen where goods have entered the country on certificates that um, citing agreements to which Jamaica is not party. That would render the, those goods ineligible for preferential market access. So as um, exporters, please um, do your due diligence, but also as you import, ensure that the due diligence is carried out by the exporting country. The direct transport or consignment um, uh, requirement must be met, which is, um, can be evidenced on the bill of lading. Preferential treatment is administered um, via the ASICLUDA platform and let me explain where the relevant agreement must be selected in box 36 in order to effect the tariff treatment. Earlier, in an earlier slide, when I itemized the agreements, I would have identified the code to be, to be, to be identified when um, preparing your ESAD so that you, it, you ensure that your, your products would have gotten they, they cited for um, preferential treatment and the um, pertinent reduction or elimination would have been enforced. In certain instances, other tax types may also be waived. For example, um, additional stamp duty. Additional um, stamp duty is classified as an ODC, which is other duty and charges, and under the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, as well as the economic partnership agreements, Jamaica would have, and other member states would have agreed to eliminate their ODCs. Other fees and charges, such as GCT, SCF, environmental levy, and CAF, remain applicable. And we implore you to know your resources and we would share with you who you can contact um, in any of these scenarios um, to access the integrated tariff, which is based on the WCO Harmonized System. You can um, locate that on the JCA's website. 
you, we encourage you to consult a licensed custom broker for a classification advice. And for more challenging queries, you can email us at iilu at jca.gov.jm. And similarly, we would have directed you to the Trade Board Limited um, website um, for the various, um, to submit queries as well as to locate um, these agreements um, as well as the UNCTAD website. With respect to FTAs and the you are all and the Jamaica Gazette, you can submit a query to us here at Customs or the Trade Board Limited. You can purchase your Gazette at the Jamaica Printing Service. You can also access um, the FTAs on our website or sice.oas.org or the um, CARICOM website. Thank you for your time and attention. And um, this is an, um, our contact information. And the slides will be shared. Um, great, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much again, Ms. Davis. That was a lot of information, but it was a lot of great information. I learned a lot. Funny story is, you know, I did my associate degree in government and politics. So when you started talking about tariffs and trade, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forget all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then my mom did her degree with me. She decided that she was going to focus on international business. So she works in the Ministry of International Business in Barbados. And I... I, I didn't want to do my degree and completely do the same degree with her, you know, so I focus more on marketing. So when you're doing all this, I'm thinking, you know, these are some of the things that she talks to me about, you know, just she's talking about her job, this and that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. zoning out. <laughs> but this, this was a learning experience for me. And um, I hope it was beneficial to the participants as well i believe that it would have been as i was i was definitely listening because i wanted to know what were the different places that persons would be able to you know get preferential treatment you know um and especially now russia and everything that's happening a lot of a lot of products that you would have normally being able to see on the shelves they're no longer on the shelves because we didn't even know that they were coming out of um you know so now we have to fill gaps we have to look to fill some gaps there so exporting is a possibility yes there's there are restrictions on exportation now but it everything that happens there's always some good or some benefit that you can tap into and that is definitely something you learn when you're in Jamaica right so um does anyone have any questions let me let me ask you a question because you know whenever I go to any of the conferences right and I tell persons that I'm from Barbados, the fastest thing they tell me is, why well, can't I get my product into Barbados, <laughs> right? <laughs> so you, you answer that question, why can't they get their product into Barbados? Well, um, it would be difficult from the Jamaican perspective because while we're all a part of the customs union, and we, are, we trade under the revised treaty, um, once again, it depends on the product, whether or not the product would have met the rules of origin for access into the caracol market. And that's one of the first things to ask. Um, is your, does your product meet the rule of origin? I will not want to infer that there are technical barriers to trade or non-tariff barriers in Barbados um, pertaining to standards and to sanitary matters. I, I don't want to go along that line because I would be um, just grasping at straws as I have no evidence and I don't know your product. But the first question I would ask is, um, let me have a look at your product. 
Um, did it meet the rules of origin? Um, have you consulted with the Trade Board Limited who does that pre-verification assessment, looking at the inputs into your product to ensure that the product meets the rule of origin? That is the first question that I would ask. They may be having other problems, I, um, but I'm not qualified to comment <laughs> on the other issues. But yes, the first question I would ask is, does the product meet the rule of origin? All right, so when you say origin, you mean in terms of, is it Jamaican, Jamaican? Well, your product can be origin. So in rules of origin, we have um, three main ways of determining or um, determining nationality. The product can either be all wholly obtained, it can, but it can also be substantially transformed, right? So um, if it's and it, the rule of the product specific rule, each product has a specific rule that it takes when origin is determined. So for instance, if we are, if we want to um, export pork, fresh pork to Jamaica, it would have to be wholly obtained. So the pig would have had to be um, born and reared in Jamaica and for it to qualify, qualify. If we imported the pig and killed it in Jamaica, it would not meet the rule because it's not wholly obtained. That's a simple response. Similarly, a rule may be for another product, maybe a change in tariff heading. And this is getting technical now. But um, if it is that an input, an extra regional input is of a tariff heading that is the same as the final product, then it would not qualify for community origin. Because a change of tariff heading rule would provide that um, the input, the extra regional input should not be in the same heading as a final product. So you have those kind of technicalities that would inform um, whether or not this rule of origin is met. There may be other problems outside of rules of origin that the exporter may be facing. Um, but I see Shamila's hand up and I'm sure she's going to jump in to tell you about some of the other problems they may be facing in the Barbados market. Well, I don't want to talk about the problems. I would just wanted to talk from JMEA's perspective in terms of how we would handle a situation like this, because we get these kind of requests all the time. They may have an issue with entering the market with their product. Sometimes it's based on misinformation communicated to them, and sometimes it's just not understanding the regulation. Yeah. Um, so where we have the information, we will impart it to all members, but in other cases, most cases, we will identify the agencies that are responsible for these regulations and helping members get into the export market and in the export market and then we will pass on the challenges they're facing see if we can come up with a solution or directly put eventually put the client the member onto the specific agency um, but rules of origin is, is is a very simple thing to overcome but there may be other factors misinformation is a big part yeah. of it and, and quite frankly, we cannot give an answer generally. It depends so much on the product, the type of product, whether it's fully processed, whether it's it's a live animal, whether it's a yes. canned good or a bottled good. The labeling can be a problem and you're not aware of it. Um, and it depends on the market as well. Now, if you're an, a non-Jamaican, like maybe a country from Colombia, the regulations would be different for market entry into a CARICOM country. Rules of origin are really important for CARICOM countries because you are able to benefit from reduced taxes, um, reduced duties, if you can be able to pr can prove that your product is from a CARICOM country like Jamaica, for instance. Yeah. Mr. Willis, you have your hand up? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I was Thank you, um, Chandeline, for that um, presentation. It's a whole lot of information. And I, I really would like to um, get my hand on what that presentation, because, you know, it could help. Because, um, you know, as exporters of, um, we export all the green bean coffees from Jamaica. 
and from time to time. There are issues in various countries, like in China, you have issues that are um, unique to them. And so if you don't know them, you might find the shipment um, will get there and then it is held in on the on the on uh, in a cost in the area there um, until whatever um, documentation has to be sent. So um, yes, you know yes. these sort of information is very very critical, very critical. And I must congratulate her again for her presentation. A lot of a lot of material. Yep, <laughs> it was it was really good. Um, so we don't have any questions from the. I guess it was too much information. <laughs> um, oh, I wanted to ask, um, which is easier, by boat or plane? My plane is faster, but more expensive. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and it depends on your cargo. Yeah. Um, yeah, some cargo is more suitable to, to, to export by sea and your destination. If you're going, if it's perishable, definitely by air, yeah. um, because you will lose your cargo by sea. If it is, so you're doing um, flowers and um, uh, yeah. fish, tropical fish, the live fish um, um, uh, market, it's definitely important to go by air, irrespective of the cost. But some cargo is best place to go by, by sea. And, and you can ship certain frozen and fresh produce by sea, but yes. it will only be, it makes sense if you're going to fill a container. Yes. You know, so it, it's really going to be expensive if you can only fill half a quarter of a container. Um, Deidre, you have any questions? No questions here. Oh. Yeah. All right. So it's twelve twenty one, and I don't have any questions from the from the person. Oh, let me ask you a question. So, say someone is thinking about this is just a, a random question. So, someone is thinking about getting a block making um, machine, right? And they're thinking. Well, if it doesn't work out in Jamaica, can I maybe make blocks in Jamaica and export out? What would be the hardest thing that they would have to go through? I think um, exactly. So, um, it, I would think that uh, the, the, the specification for blocks Mm -hmm. For example, in the um, receiving country is critical because um, they yes, might have their, their guidelines and so on. So you, while it might be acceptable here, it might not necessarily be acceptable in that country. Those are some of the mm -hmm. things that has to be um, taken into consideration. Other thing, uh, one of the things that should be taken into consideration. Okay. Yes, market research is very important. I mean, I tell you, um, sometimes we... We jump on a bandwagon and we say we, want to, we think we can do with this thing and we just want to send it out. But we have mm. not done the requisite research to mm. see whether or market not what is required in that market, whether or not the market is open to that yeah. product. You know, that type of thing. So it's, I will allow Shamila to talk. More yeah, Shamila. <laughs> and the same thing hard. applies to the local market tour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Starting, a business, starting a business requires market research. A lot of people have lost all of their savings because they did not do the market research. Yes. And then when, you, when you start yes. the business and the customers don't buy your products, you get <sighs> stock that you cannot use and your money out of your pocket that you can't recoup. Mm -hmm. um, Market research is really critical, and um, there are agencies in Jamaica that can help you with that. Um, there's online there's online information that you can find. Sometimes you just have to make a direct call to mm -hmm. an agency in the country, especially if it's in the CARICOM region. Um, the other thing is knowing how you're going to get your product to that country, especially for blocks. 
Mm. Obviously, it's going to be shipping. But the <laughs> thing too is that if you decide you want to go to St. Lucia, for instance, there mm. is not a direct route from Jamaica to St. Lucia. Mm. You know mm. so typically would either have to go to Barbados or Trinidad and then find a smaller vessel to mm. go to St. Lucia. Because the, it, obviously, because of those, those small countries are smaller, Mm -hmm. Big cargo ships are not going there regularly unless there's, mm. there's cars and so those cargo would go straight, but not necessarily. They will stop off in a few countries before they get to St. Lucia. Mm. So that is important. Logistics is important. Mm -hmm. Being able to meet the demand, yeah. making sure you can supply, you can make enough product fast enough at the same quality to yes. meet the demand when 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 your product enters and it's it, it's successful in the market they're going to want to export import more so you mm -hmm. have to be able to ensure that you're going to be able to supply as requested because in a split second if they don't get their product they're going to go to another manufacturer yes and it's, that's simple that's the nature of business mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. yeah um i have a client that makes like, you know, like nuts and those type of products that you would find on the side of the street. But what she tries to do is make it more fancy, put some cranberries, put some almonds, you know, make it have a, a different taste, make it more healthy. And so she's saying she's having problems with Jacra. I, I don't know what her problems are because it seems like it's pretty straightforward maybe is a labeling problem, Mr. Willis? So, well, um, something like that could be a labeling problem. Mm -hmm. It could be um, whatever combination of um, nuts uh, uh, that is in it. So um, the issue is that um, there is, there's a, is, is it import or export? In is terms of, of exporting, import? she's she wants to, She's thinking about exporting to Grenada. Okay. All right. And Guyana. So, so she's having difficulty with the whole process. Well, it, it, as, as, um, as it stands now, it is dependent on what, um, it, what the combination of um, nuts or grains or whatever is in, in, is in the product. Then, um, she would have to come into Jakra and said, um, you know, have the discussion. What is it that she wants to export? And based on that, then she'll be guided accordingly. And that would make the, the process easier. But sometimes persons aren't really aware of um, what is being regulated. So, you know, um, they should always check to see um, what, is, what are the requirements for certain things going on. Yeah, and this thing is about readiness. Um, she might want to export, but is she ready to get into the export market? Mm -hmm. The first thing you need to do as a Jamaican business, if you want to get into exporting, is you have to register with the trade board, I believe, to become an exporter, Jampo, right? You have to ex mm -hmm. register as an exporter. You will, your products will not leave Jamaica. Customs will not allow your product to leave the borders if you do not have, if you're not certified as an exporter in Jamaica. That's the first thing. Um, and as Mr. Willis explained, there are different regulations for co product composition. So if you're just selling on the side of the road, even if you're selling in a stadium, the requirements are so different if you want to get to exporting. So this is a general response because you don't know what the issues are. And until you meet with the person, you can't really help them provide an answer. But they need to go to an agency in Jamaica that deals with these matters to get all of the information and then she can take it from there. Okay. So I'm you thinking, heard. Mm -hmm, I'm thinking, Tanil, that she also, if it's nuts, that's something that all islands produce. And some of us are major traders and some of us um, create niche products. Um, to, so we are smaller manufacturers in some of the other islands. And so they create a niche product in their market. I am not so certain that that is a product that she should be exporting, um, especially in terms of um, um, competition 
with and whether it would survive, survive the market. Because, and that's one of the problems within the CSME, in that all our countries, we produce live products. For the most part, <laughs> we produce live products. And so we are competing within the same space with the same product. And um, it may be, maybe as um, Shamila said, you, um, you think it's a bright idea, not recognizing that you are um, reinventing the wheel because it's been a bright idea for a while. And so what I believe um, in her context, um, she's in this health food market, probably um, again, market intelligence, market research, uh, to see how people consume this product in Diana and Grenada, to see if it can be presented in a new way. So instead of um, just putting nuts and craisins in a bag and all of that and sealing it prettily, um, which everybody does, maybe she can do uh, a nut pie type thing like we make a coconut pie and make a nut pie. And so it's not a granola bar, mm -hmm. label it differently, you know, that type of thing, a different consistency, very Caribbean or something. So it has a distinctiveness in the market that may allow some kind of inroad and consumer um, interest because if the consumers aren't interested, if it's the same old, same old, especially if, it's a little pricier, you know, um, because there are shipping costs um, to take it. And as Jamila outlined, there are no real direct routes like that to the smaller islands. Um, so it becomes more costly to ship it. So all of those things have to be born in mind. And maybe she, has not, maybe she has not sufficiently explored her opportunities locally. Um, yes. Because she can get she can get assistance from the bureau of standards to improve her packaging, her labeling. She can even approach to make sure she gets she has her products certified, her production process is certified. Yeah. Because the hotel industry is a, a significantly large industry in Jamaica. She can approach hotels to have them package her nuts with their names and sell it in this in their in their sure. shops or, yeah. or make, it, make it available to their own um to the visitors on, in their hotels. So she maybe might need to reconsider her strategy for market penetration in Jamaica. Because nuts is one of the most commonly produced items in the region. You can get it on yes. the side of the street at um, really nice tasting quality. And because of the high heat in the, a lot of the, a lot of the um, illness born um, possibilities are, are, are eradicated. So um, I would, the thing about exporting is there are few companies that are solely exporting. It is highly recommended that you master your local market before you get into exporting because exports bring in additional revenue. That's the whole point of exporting, to increase your margins, to increase your profit, to increase your sales. So if you're not, if you're not intentionally trying to uh, maximize your potential in the local market, you're going to lose a lot of money in the export market. Okay. Um, I realize a lot of persons are going to Panama lately. Can, do we have any preferential treatment to Panama? No. No? No. Mm. Yeah. Um, now, because I see that a lot of persons are looking at Panama as the next big thing, the place that they need to get their business into, because I have consultants that are actually looking to move over to Panama to work. So, and I did a course once in um, international marketing. And one of the things they had asked us to do is look at possibly exporting pepper sauce to Panama. So when we started doing the market research, we realized that, you know, Panama has so many persons of Caribbean descent there that they have similar products. And it would be kind of an issue. So I was asking, has anyone approached you all about going to Panama yet? No, but um, a study was done several years ago. 
about um, expanding trade and trade agreements with Latin America and other countries. And it was determined that it's not in Jamaica's best interest at this time to pursue those things. And note that Panama is very much a part of Central America and with there, and there are several trade agreements between them. So things like pe pepper mash is not a new thing. For the, this is a good that they trade heavily in, as well as the other um, Central American countries. So um, it would have to, um, again, it comes back to like home um, products. It also comes back to productive capacity of those countries. When you're thinking about um, trade agreements, um, you have to ensure that you don't open up yourself to possible injury. You see, and these are large producers, um, larger farms, larger outlays. And so we must be um, very, very, um, we must pursue intelligently. Yes, and these, um, when we're looking at these markets. Um, so no, we would not, it's not something that is on the agenda. And coming out of that UN ECLAC study, um, it would have indicated that it, there is very little benefit to be derived. It was zero point something percent, I believe, or some minuscule to be derived from doing that. I, I in this forum and in my personal opinion um, and professional, I believe we need to strengthen our own productive capacities to ensure that we have an export product to take full advantage of the current FTAs that we're a part of, because we're not doing that as a net importing country. We are, so we would be, we would not be sufficient. We would not be benefiting because we are not exporting in the capacities and at the, in the volume and frequency that we need to export. So I think we would be best served to develop, to build out our own productive capacities so that we can take advantage of the market, ensure the diversification um, of what we're doing, seek to, seek to um, diversify even in the commonly traded goods to make them distinctly Jamaican, a different flavor, different, not just a different label, you know? For instance, Mi Miracle, Miracle, they have a scotch bonnet sauce that is like no other. I don't know if you have encountered it. I rarely see it on the shelf, it's yellow. But oh my word, I buy nothing else. It carries a scotch bonnet flavor, not just heat. And so it's very distinct and separated from the other pepper sauces that we produce, the red ones and the green ones. It's very distinctive. And for those who can appreciate the flavor of the Scotch one, it brings that to the table. I know America have to pay me now for advertising, don't it? Oh, yes, <laughs> but, I'm wondering. But it is a good, I'm just using it as an example. But so even as we build out on our spicy ketchup, that the, so you have these products coming out, but we need to build out sufficiently, and then we, we need to try and focus in to markets first, where it become, it is a phenomenon. They have never seen it before. <laughs> so we're getting that into Europe. Yes. You see, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's, it's ex, it would be excellent. And if we can develop that taste and feel, flavor, and I'm sure Jampro would look at something like this um, in terms of market penetration. But before we can look at, I believe, new agreements, we have to look at internal um, production, increasing that, bettering the product we're trying to put out there so that we can have not just market penetration, but market sustainability. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with the you. Question uh, is too many. But before we get to that question, I wanted to add that there is expressed interest for Dom Dominican Republic. Yes. Um, there's growing interest. Um, there is a lot of potential for Jamaican companies to really penetrate and be successful in the Dominican Republic. One, because of proximity. Um, we have some established direct routes in terms of logistics to the Dom yes. Dominican Republic. And now we have a direct flight to- right. Dominican Republic, which is about 200 US round trip, I believe, could be one way. But um, we need to stay closer to home. If you look at, we are net 
we are we are, we have a trade deficit basically yes. with countries in in Latin America, especially Central America, because when they talk about sizes of farms, we're talking acres. They're talking hectares. You know mm -hmm. that that that's a significant difference, and their population mm -hmm. and and country sizes are so much more massive. Their land, the yes. the lands that they have the scale access. Of production. The scale of production. Mm -hmm. We a lot of our input inputs we get from those regions: bottles, mm -hmm. labels, bottle covers, you name it. Um, in in so packaging especially so. It's not a viable market for us to export into and make a significant impact unless you have some astronomically unique product and you're targeting a very specific area or group of people, niche marketing. All right, let me ask this question. How do we go about assessing the relevant information about the various requirements for taking advantage of export markers? For example, product specification, labeling requirements, prohibited products, prohibited ingredients. That's a question that was there on life. Well, I'll just take a stab at it. Um, mm -hmm. For all our members, it depends on the product, um, again. Um, but JBDC is a good resource. Jampro is a good resource. Mm -hmm. Um, they can give you all of the information that you need to think about or all the agencies that you need to go to um, to get information about your products. You make the Bureau of Standards as well is extremely important in this process. They can help you with product testing. They can help you to develop yes. formulas to make your, con your product consistent for manufacturing. Um, Trade Board as well has a lot of information to give um, with respect to developing your business and getting into exporting. There are certain products that require a license to export or a license to import. Even some of your import inputs, you might need a license to import them. For instance, if you're making juices and you use sugar, you need to get an import license from the trade board to be able to bring in that sugar. And you get a, a start, they give you a limit on how much you can import every year. And every year you have to renew that application. So yes. lots of different things to consider, but approach the key organizations, the key business support organizations, and that they can steer you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And if it is something that impacts um, in terms of um, plant and animal, if you're doing an animal-based product and um, their health standards, food safety standards and so forth, again, you have your standards, NCRA, Ministry of Agriculture. They do a lot of work in that area to help to um, empower producers to meet those health standards so that their product can be exported. So um, a good place to start, as Shamila said, Jampo, Jamie A does a lot of their work for their clients. So it's a good place um, to have a sit down to discuss it, um, your business idea, how you'd want to develop your business, the product, and you, you'd be surprised that there is a, a bounty of information available to help to guide you um, in as much as possible. But then in addition to the information provided um, locally, there's also a responsibility um, in the, on your shoulders to pursue it. Yeah, to also do some other legwork. So if it is that you have this marvelous product, you have gotten the information and you're seeking a market, especially if it's a market that has not previously been penetrated or looked at in any real way um, um, by Jampro or um, any other stakeholder, um, it's important to have the discussions if you have found a possible buyer engage. And you can come back, I believe, to any one of these um, national stakeholders, if you need guidance um, in building out those contract terms and you know that type of thing. There is such provision, um, there is assistance, but it's important. I've heard persons um, 
producers and um, they're waiting on, many of them have said the government has not done this for them, but I'm encouraging you to, in addition to what is provided by the government, to do practice your own due diligence um, to a certain extent, to make your, make your own inroads, ask your questions. And then um, what happens when you come back to the, the, the national entities, a conversation that can help to, 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 to guide you better, I'm thinking. Yeah, because a lot of persons think a lot of persons think that the entities are fighting them and that the persons that are allowed to, you know, export are the bigger firms, but that's not the case, is that they sat down, they worked with it, they asked the questions, they they pushed through with it mm -hmm. because they saw the opportunities. And exporting is not easy. Because as we can see, there are so many things deliberately put into place to stop you because the whole aim is to buy locally, right? So even if you would want to export your product into another country, they're going to have their stops, right? But you also have to be able to follow through with all their regulations. All of all of the things that they need in order to for you to comply, mm -hmm. Mr. Willis, you were about to say something. I'm just I'm just um, endorsing what you're saying because um, it's the same thing here. Um, persons want to export or, or import, right? For argument, say coffee, they have, they have to we have to make sure that they whatever they import won't result in a in a. Um, loss to your industry and why yes. hold your industry and it left to some people that could really happen because some uh, all coffee tends to be on the, in, in a niche market and as a result the price is a little pricier than other coffees but if you reach a stage where more coffee is coming in and more coffee comes in and you have a problem sooner or later you could be um it might be um felt that some collusion is taking place and mixing and all sorts of things taking place. So you have to be very careful because, you know, when you're, and they, whoever, the, the king fed, the crown is on, but uh, everybody's waiting to get that crown off. So we have to be careful. Or Blue Mountain Coffee, for example, is one of the coffees that is rated very highly in the world. So everybody's watching. And everybody's doing a lot of um, the countries in the in the Central Americas. They have come to Jamaica. They have, you know, studied what we we have done and what we've been doing. I know they have improved a lot of things here. So you know, we have to remain sharp on that in terms of what we do. I just want to add that I want to stress the point that large large companies up today did not start large. True. You know, Grace Kennedy, for instance, Grace Kennedy, uh, Grace, the Grace family from Jamaica, the Kennedy family from the U.S. And, and, and another family, they did not start off, they didn't start their own business. The founder started working at the company owned by Kennedy and another family and eventually became a partner and they eventually got into, into manufacturing. So, you know, these things don't happen overnight and you have to have a drive. You can't wait for government agencies or business support organizations to be interested in your business. You have to be interested first. And I'm just gonna leave that there. You're so correct about that because if you aren't um, have, if you do not have that sort of drive and interest, you do your due diligence and all of that. And the person will, will take the entity, the companies or the agencies won't take much interest in you. That's really true. Opportunities are still available. Sure. That's what they need to yeah. realize. Opportunities yeah. are still it ain't gone out to sell yet. <laughs> it's still available. <laughs> sure. All right. So we're just going to finish up now. Thank you so much for coming in. Mr. Willis, Miss Miss Moses, and Miss Davis. Y'all were wonderful superstars. You you did a really great job. I'm so sorry that there weren't more persons here. I guess it's clashing with a lot of other events, like we have graduation today. So 
Thanks again for coming. The, we will have this presentation available on our YouTube. So if anyone is interested in going back and watching it, they'll be able to do so. All right. And the persons that would have registered, we would also email it out to them. So thanks again for coming. And that's it. <laughs> Okay. Thank Thanks you for having, for having, me. having us. All the best. All right. Have a good day. Have a good afternoon. Bye. You too. And lunch is on you, not me. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 -bye.